Coming up on Mountain News at 5.30, the governor has issued a state of emergency. More on what he said during his news conference this morning. Plus, after nearly a year of war, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky pays a surprise visit to the United States. Plus, we are dry this evening, but some major changes are on the way. That full first alert forecast coming up as Mountain News at 5.30 starts now. Dedicated to Southern and Eastern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 5.30. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. The bitter cold air is a little more than 24 hours away, and we are also monitoring the threat of snowfall overnight tomorrow. That's why it's a first alert weather day. Let's check in with meteorologist Cameron Aaron for the very latest. Cameron. Yes, yeah, Steve, this afternoon and evening weather not too bad across the region, but some big changes are right around the corner. Let's go over to UVA wise this afternoon and into the evening as well. Looking at clouds increasing across the region right now, 45 degrees over at wise. We're actually near our average high temperature this afternoon over in wise and Moorhead. Same story, 43. Also looking at traffic running smoothly as more people are hitting the roads as we get closer and closer to the Christmas holiday week weekend. Upper 40s, lower 50s, 50 for Somerset, 48 for London, 46 in Jackson, and down to 42 right now over in Prestonsburg. Good news, dry on radar, but that is going to come to a change as we get towards Thursday. A few showers are possible later tonight into Thursday. Then that changes over to snow as that snow off towards the north and west begins to move off into our direction. Then we're tracking some bitter cold into Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and that is why Steve mentioned we are under a first alert weather day and that will continue into your Christmas holiday weekend as well. That full forecast coming up in just a little bit. Steve. All right, Cameron, thank you. Governor Bashir has already declared a state of emergency in preparation for potentially sub-zero temperatures across the Commonwealth. The governor signed that order and an order to prevent price gouging this morning. State leaders said during that briefing that they have already taken steps to be as prepared as possible when this winter storm hits. Jim Stratman has more. Kentucky is under a state of emergency. Governor Andy Bashir, along with other state officials, said that the winter storm moving towards the Commonwealth will bring bitterly cold temperatures, wind chills well below zero, and very tough road conditions. One of our biggest concerns is a flash freeze. Uh, that's when uh, the temperatures drop very, very, very quickly, and any rain or snow that is there uh, turns to ice and with our temperatures it's going to be very difficult to thaw uh, that ice. The governor said that he recommended each county set up at least one warming shelter and the national parks are ready to serve as backup shelters. The National Guard is positioning response teams around the state while Kentucky State Police are coordinating with local officials about how to get to hard to reach places. Transportation Secretary Jim Gray says that the state has more than 300,000 tons of salt and a million gallons of calcium chloride prepped and ready to go. We have um, time, and you have time. Time to prepare, uh, time to know that you need to be weather aware, and we have time uh, to position assets across the state to be ready to respond. State officials emphasize that now is the time to prepare. Make sure you go through your checklist before the freeze hits. Make sure that you have supplies on hand. You have a plan already made up and you know where your nearest warming center is just in case you need to evacuate. It's going to be really cold, dangerously cold, uh, cold enough to give uh, people frostbite uh, very quickly, uh, cold enough to be dangerous for your animals. So uh, take care of yourself, take care of each other, take care of your families. Reporting in Frankfurt, Jim Stratman, WKYT. The governor says special teams will be going out to visit areas that have been impacted by natural disasters like last year's tornadoes in western Kentucky and the summer's flooding here in eastern Kentucky to make sure that those folks have what they need to get through the cold. One of President Biden's most senior cybersecurity advisors is expected to step down soon. Sources say National Cybersecurity Director Chris Inglis plans to retire in the next two months. Inglis has served in the position since the law established the office in 2021. When asked about his future plans, he did not deny that he may resign. The resignation could happen after the White House releases its new national cybersecurity strategy to protect critical infrastructure across the nation. 
Kimba Aeneas Walden is expected to serve as acting director if Inglis leaves. Walden is a former Microsoft executive who joined the National Cybersecurity Director's Office back in May. A report released by the Congressional Joint Committee on Taxation finds former President Trump did not pay a single dollar in federal income tax in his final year in office. The report included details on the former president's tax returns from 2015 to 2020. In 2017, he paid just $750. Trump paid $1.1 million in federal taxes in 2018 and 19. The committee says Trump has leveraged massive losses he accumulated through the years to zero out his tax liabilities. The news comes after the House Ways and Means Committee voted to release six years of Trump's tax documents to the public. The redacted release is expected in a matter of days. After 300 days of war, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is in Washington, D.C. tonight. During the surprise trip, Zelensky is meeting with President Biden in the Oval Office and will address a joint meeting of Congress on Capitol Hill tonight at 730. And you can see live coverage of that here on WYMT. Ivan Rodriguez has the latest. It's good to have you back. I'm delighted that you're able to make the trip to be here. And, uh, you know, uh, it's an honor to be by your side in the United Defense against what is a brutal, brutal war in Wake Forest. In his first trip outside of Ukraine since the war started, President Vladimir Zelensky is in Washington to rally support from his top international partner. For some, the trip sends an important message. I think it's extremely critical uh, and it's a very important uh, event to have uh, President Zelensky, a wartime leader, meeting with the president and then speaking to Congress. Over the last week, U.S. and Ukrainian officials planned the trip in secret. After arriving in Poland by train, Zelensky then flew aboard a U.S. military aircraft to Washington. I think it's a war fighting to protect democracies uh, from the kind of aggression that Putin conducted against Ukraine. A key moment during the trip, President Biden is expected to announce $1.8 billion in additional security assistance, including Patriot air defense systems. This adds to the nearly $20 billion the U.S. has sent to Ukraine since the war began. Russia has warned about unspecified consequences if the U.S. provided Ukraine with Patriot missiles. An official says U.S. troops would train Ukrainians to use the systems in a third country. Also saying President Biden remains committed in keeping the U.S. out of direct conflict with Russia. I'm Ivan Rodriguez reporting. President Zelensky says he is in Washington, D.C. to thank the American people, President Biden and Congress for their much needed support. Coming up on Mountain News at 530, sometimes what you find online is too good to be true. We'll show you what to watch out for to avoid counterfeit goods and why they could be a threat to your wallet. Plus a wind chill watch and warnings in effect as Arctic air spills into the region. All those details coming up.